Hey guys, DJ Ravine here and welcome to another Get out of here. We know exactly why we're here. We're here to check out the brand new version of Ableton, which is Ableton 10.1 Beta. Now it's still a beta, but in this incremental upgrade, they've added a lot of cool features, including things to automation, a couple of new audio effects, and also a new feature inside Wavetable. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, I've got my copy ready here. Let's go and check it out. All right, so I've got my project loaded up here. It's actually my intro to production Ableton uh, final project, so it makes sense to use this here. Now, first of all, the major feature, which is they've added custom wavetables into the wavetable synth in Ableton Live 10. Now, they added wavetable in the original version of Ableton 10.0, and it's basically a, well, it's a wavetable synth. So it's similar to Massive, similar to Serum, but I like how it's implemented in Ableton Live 10 because it's very simple and it has that standard minimalistic Ableton interface. Now, let's start off by looking at this bass that I've made in this track. It sounds like this. And that's very simple. I've literally just gotten a Vengeance bass line, added a side chain on it, um, overdrive, and I've just dragged it into Ableton Simpler. So it's just a wave sample. Now, let's duplicate that. And in this one, let's solo it. In this one, let's go and load up Wavetable. So now Wavetable's loaded up and it's given us the default Wavetable settings. Now, if I go to this little drop down menu here and click on User, we can now drop our samples into this little box here and there we have it, we have our own wavetables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drop that sample that I used in the previous baseline into wavetable here. And if we play it, yeah, it sounds kind of weird, but this is wavetable so we can make it whatever we want it to be. So I'm gonna change the wave position. Find a place I like that, but you know what? First of all, I'm gonna go and chuck an LFO on that. So I'm gonna click on wave position and I'm gonna go to LFO, drop that to about 70. And then we're gonna go and edit that LFO a little bit. I think we're gonna, yeah, sweet. And we're gonna drop that to uh, minus 24 semitones. There we go, that sounds quite chunky. And now we have a brand new bass line. That sounds crap. Not chunky enough for me. Let's get that overdrive going. There we go. And that's the beauty of having custom wavetables is that you can pretty much just drag in anything. You can drag in a full song, take out a tiny bit of that song using the wave position, LFO it, get some cool modulation going, and then you can make a sound out of anything. And another great thing is that there's heaps of free wavetables that you can just download online. Another thing that they've added, which I'm so, so happy because it has done me in so many times, is you can finally freeze tracks which have sidechain compression. So if we look at this track here, I've got this bass line. And we've got it sidechained to this ghost kick right now, so. Okay, so the sidechain's on, you can all see that. I'm gonna right click and go freeze track. And guess what? It doesn't give us the error that says we can't freeze sidechain. It is freezing it right now, and there we go. If I drag that on to another audio track, you can see that quite obviously, the sidechain is there. It's dipping at every single beat. Amazing. Such a small thing, but it's made me so happy. So next up, we've got the audio effects. You will be familiar with these because what they've done is that they've changed EQ3 into channel EQ, which is more like a cut down version of EQ8, but with just three EQs. They still have EQ3 if you wanna use it, but I think channel EQ is superior in every way. Let's go take a look at it. So I'm just gonna drop that into that baseline that I just made. We're gonna go into audio effects and channel EQ, double click that boy. And here we go, there's channel EQ for you. Now, as you can see, you've now got a spectrum analyzer in channel EQ, which EQ3 didn't have, but EQ8 did. Now, one of the advantages of channel EQ over EQ3 is firstly, which is my biggest problem with EQ3, it doesn't mess with the color of the sound. For some reason, EQ3 changes the phase and something to do with the crossover points of the low, mid, and highs. Channel EQ doesn't do that. When you put it in, the sound's gonna sound exactly like it was before you put in channel EQ. Now, another cool thing about it is that with the low, mids, and highs, you can actually change the mid frequency. So I'll show you now. Mm -hmm. 
Simply by dragging that, we can make it higher or lower. You can also high pass the uh, whole thing by just clicking this button at 80 hertz. And another cool thing about that is that Spectrum Analyzer now also appears on Push 2. So it's got full Push 2 integration from the get-go. All right, so that's Channel EQ. The next thing that they've done is they've combined Simple Delay and Ping Pong Delay, which I think is great, actually. I thought it was kind of silly at the beginning. I was like, why would you want to combine those two? But now it's actually made it much easier and much more straightforward. So we're going to go and load up Delay. It's now just called Delay Simple. You know, you don't really need to explain what it is. It's a delay. And there you go. As you can see, delay just looks like they've smashed up simple delay and ping pong delay into each other. And we've got this little amalgamation here. You've inherited simple delay's little uh, timing grid, I guess you could call it, with the synced and also the linked timings. You've also inherited ping pong delay's little filter graph, which allows you to change how the delay gets filtered. It's also larger than the original ping pong delay's graph, so you got a bit more precision as well. Now, one of the things I really, really like about it is that they've changed the delay mode and made it appear instead of having it as a contextual menu when you right click ping pong delay. Also, this was only in ping pong delay. Simple delay didn't have this. So what this is, is that it allows you to change the mode at how it resamples the delay from repitch, fade, and jump. And then, of course, if you want ping pong delay, literally just click the ping pong button. And another cool thing is that you can finally freeze your feedback. And now that delay is going to go on forever until I unclick that button, which is now. Nice. And finally, there's also modulation. So you can actually have like a mini LFO over this delay. So if I want to modulate the time slightly, I can chuck that up and then it will make the time go with an LFO. And you can change the frequency of that LFO too. So let's give that a go. Very trippy. You can also do that to the filter. So that was delay. I think it's a great little implementation, especially because I'm indecisive and sometimes I don't know if I want simple delay or ping pong delay. Now I can have both. All right, and now onto my, what is possibly my favorite part of the upgrade, which is the automation changes. My God, they are amazing. So. Firstly, we can finally edit automation values, which is, I know, this, is, this, this should have been available a long time ago, and you'd think it's a really small change, but I'm just glad that they've done it. So now, if we right-click on a automation point, we just click Edit Value, and now I can type what I want it to be. You know what? I want this to be zero. And there we go. It's zero. I could never, ever get zero with the mouse. I'm like holding Command, trying to get that like really, really super accurate point, and I just I can never hit that one value that I wanted. So now you can finally just right click, edit value, 50, done. Next up, we have something else that's super, super cool. It is automation shapes. So now if I highlight this part of the song and I right click, at the bottom you see all this insert shape business. Now I can insert an actual sine wave automation if that's what I want. And there you go, I have a sine wave, and you can just duplicate that, and there you go, I've got this. You can literally manually draw in all your LFOs if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure that's how I used to do it when I tried to make dubstep the first time. There's also a lot of different shapes. I mean, you got your triangle shapes, your sawtooths, your uh, square waves. You can also do like a kind of fady kind of thing, a fady boy. Another cool thing about the automation changes is you can stretch and skew automation. Now, if you look closely, you can see these eight little squares on the corners and the top, left, bottom, and right of your automation selection. If I say, click and hold the one on the right-hand side, it's now gonna scale it in proportion to how much I drag it. You can also make it taller, shorter. Another cool thing about it is that if you go all the way up, the waveform is now squared off because it's it, like it's peaking in the track. If I actually drag it back down, Ableton actually remembers that it was a sine wave and you got your sine wave back, which is really, really cool. And one final thing about the automation is that if you hold F, you can now see the fades in your automation window. So instead of having to change out of automation to fade your tracks, if you simply hold F, it shows them there temporarily until you let go of F. All right, so finally, a couple little hotkey changes that they've made. S will solo and unsolo the track. Obviously, that means it won't fold your tracks anymore. That is now U. And you can also go and press W, which shows you your entire track. And you can zoom into a certain part of the track with Z. 
X now brings you back to the original waveform that you had before you started messing around with all of that. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And that's it from us. Make sure you check out pointblankmusicschool.com because we have a course called Intro to Production Ableton where we'll teach you everything you need to know about Ableton Live and Push 2, basically everything you need to know to make your own music. Anyways, that's it from us. Check out ableton.com for that beta upgrade. It is sick and so are you. See you guys later.